in the name of God, the most merciful and the most compassionate. Hi everyone, how are you doing? The sun and I bid you a warm welcome filled with hopes and dreams. I list advanced topics. The topic of today is about the art of persuasion. You will find it in listening, speaking, reading and writing. What is persuasion? Persuasion is the act of influencing someone to do something or to change their mind without duress. For example, good salespeople use persuasion to get people to buy things. What is a good example of persuasion? When we think of persuasion, negative examples are often the fairest to come to mind. But persuasion can also be used as a positive force. Public service campaigns that urge people to recycle or quit smoking are great examples of persuasion used to improve people's lives. What is the study of persuasion? Rhetoric is the study of modes of persuasion in speech and writing and is often taught as a classical subject. Psychology looks at persuasion through the lens of individual behavior and in neuroscience studies the brain activity associated with this behavior. What is the art of persuasion? The art of persuasion means convincing others to agree with your point of view or to follow a course of action. What is the most important purpose of the art of persuasion? Understanding the art of persuasion can not only help you learn how to influence others, it can also make you more aware of the techniques others might use to try and change your beliefs and behaviors. What are the principles of persuasion? These principles work via an ear automatic response, a nearly mechanical process by which the power within these weapons can be activated and the consequent exploitability of this power by anyone who knows how to trigger them. Number one, reciprocation. People will be nice if you are nice to them. Therefore, if you do something first, by giving them something or doing something nice for them, it is more likely to come back to you. The key is to go first and go positive. And at least in this case, size doesn't matter. Something as small as a pen has been shown to influence people well beyond its monetary value. Do something for a person with no conditions or expectations of a return of favor, and they are more likely to do something for you. Most content sites like blogs and news sites do employ a form of reciprocity. They allow visitors to read both current and older content at no charge and without having to register. Commitment, consistency. People unconsciously want to behave in a manner that is consistent with past behavior. Experiments have shown that if a person performs even a trivial favor for someone, they are far more likely to perform a bigger one later. Three, social proof. People pay attention to what other people are doing, both consciously and unconsciously. They will choose the crowded restaurant over the nearly empty one, even though they will be served more slowly. 
That's why bloggers trumpet their popularity when they ask you to subscribe. It is not to feed their ego, at least not entirely. It is to provide social proof that they are delivering information of great value. Similarly, companies talk about how many millions of their products have been sold or how many customers they serve and so on. It's all about social proof. You can use social proof in your sales process by referencing customers' case studies, third-party reviews, or even leverage willing customers as references your prospectus can speak with. Four, authority. People defer to those in authority, officials, professors, doctors, and experts in a field. Consciously, they may follow the direction of an authority figure. At an unconscious level, they will tend to weigh the opinion of authority more highly than that of others. Authority seems a bit like social proof, but it is based not on numbers, but on perceived expertise, status, or power. Five, liking. People we like more easily persuade us. While some liking feelings are conscious, as with a friend, often they are so subtle we aren't aware of them. A key element of liking is having a thing is in common with each other. Hence, smart salespeople work to establish common ground with their prospectus. They determine if the customer is a golfer, a football fan, a graduate of the same university, etc., to try and build the likability. A great way to leverage like in a business context is to point out what you have in common with most of your customers. If the business sells a fishing gear, a photo of the company found out wading in a stream or reeling in a fish will build a liking. Salespeople should already be familiar with this concept as building rapport is a core part of effective selling. Six, scarcity. The fewer there are of something, the more people like and want them. Usually they are quite unaware of their preference for scarcity. Marketers often employ phrases like only five left or offer expires at midnight as powerful motivators. Travel sites have also become some of the most skilled users of scarcity. They often display warnings like only two seats left at this price or only one room left. How to use persuasion in sales? Authentic persuasion is how you build the rapport, capture new clients and pitch your ideas more effectively. Start by giving your clients awesome labels one study looked at the best methods of fundraising and getting people to donate. In the experiment, the researchers told a group of donors that they were among the highest donors in the organization. This comment led this group to donate more than anyone else. These individuals lived up to the la their label. When you tell someone they are the best, they want to be the best. When you tell a customer they are awesome, they want to be awesome. Use labels to spark joy and action with your people. How to set someone up for action? Persuasion is about helping someone take an action. The action could be buying a product becoming a client or even agreeing with your opinion. The best thing you can do is have this action in the front of your mind during your entire interaction. You can do this in a number of ways. 1. 
physical action. If you have someone in your office and your goal is to get them to do something such as sign paperwork or to try a product to have the item visible from the moment someone walks in. When someone sees the inevitable action they should take, it helps them get more mentally prepared for it. <laughs> Two, digital action. Do you have a website or blog? Show people where you want them to look with pictures and eye direction. Advertisers, marketers, bloggers, and authors do this all the time to signal to the reader what is important on the paper. Take a look at how marketing and advertising guru Seth Golden uses this principle on his website. He wants you to take action. So he is looking at the sidebar panel with all of the cool areas of his website. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If we speak kindly, we can win anyone's heart. Brickalek, Saidabul Map.